Can you feel it? 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 Can you feel? Can you feel it? 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 Can you feel? Can you feel? Hello, friends. Welcome to Forza the podcast that dives in to explore the nature and experience of being alive. I'm your host, Tracy Brinock, performance artist, writer, researcher, mother, lover, all round deep diver into embodied experience. What does it feel like to be alive? How can I describe it and communicate it? How can we learn from each other's experiences of aliveness? In the series, I talk with a wide variety of guests, artists, activists, educators, spiritual teachers, writers, guides, shamans, to find out more about their experiences of the force, life force, energy of life, elixir of life, source, whatever we might call it. I hope it brings something new to your experience of being alive. Can you feel it? 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 The force that through the green fuse drives the flower drives my green age. That blasts the roots of trees is my destroyer. And I am dumb to tell the crooked rose my youth is bent by the same wintry fever. The force that drives the water through the rocks drives my red blood. That dries the mouthing streams turns mine to wax. And I am dumb to mouth unto my veins, how at the mountain spring the same mouth sucks. The hand that whirls the water in the pool stirs the quicksand, that ropes the blowing wind hauls my shroud sail. And I am dumb to tell the hanging man how of my clay is made the hangman's line. The lips of time leach to the fountainhead, Love drips and gathers, but the fallen blood shall calm her sores. And I am dumb to tell a weather's wind how time has ticked to heaven round the stars. And I am dumb to tell the lover's tomb how at my sheep goes the same crooked worm. When I started this series, I really just took the first couple of lines of that poem, the force that through the green fuse drives the flower, drives my green age. And I was resonating with, uh, I guess, a sense of force that comes through me to drive me, that drives me forward. And I was thinking about it in relation to conversations I had with friends and, and, and acquaintances, perhaps, who see an aspect of me and don't know me very well and often the comment would be you know Tracy what drives you you know you're so driven oh you're so busy you're always doing stuff and um, sometimes that comes with a little bit of a, a judgment as in I shouldn't be busy or something like that which is an interesting sort of um, exchange but it is a question I ask myself because um, I am driven if you like And it's not uh, conscious like I have a lot of effort into moving forward in my life. Sometimes I do. But I'm talking about something that is, um, if I say, much older or much younger than that. It's something that I can recognize in my experience of being alive from a very young age. 
So it's not cognitive, it's not a mental kind of force. Although it fills my mental capacity, it fills my thinking. And if I track it now as I'm speaking, I, I can remember, and it's in my body now, I remember really very young, like three, four, being filled with life like so excited so excited about ideas and learning and working things out and being able to do things excited about my capacity I suppose in one sense and that really came alive for me probably at school at home it was more difficult because I was the eldest of three girls at that time eventually became the eldest of five and so there wasn't always enough space for me to be that full at home. But at school, that was welcomed. And I also learned how to contain it. And that containment of life force, I think, can happen in two ways. More recently, as I uh, trained in somatic practice with my teacher, Joan Davis, in Ireland, um, this pattern, I suppose, of learning and when the life force is really bursting through me and the excitement that I want to share it comes in. Learning how to contain it, which means not repressing it, which is probably something that I did learn to do in my life. You know, if I'm not allowed to express this enormous energy, then I need to keep it down, bury it, dissociate, kind of go into something else. But actually, through the somatic process, I learned how to allow it to be there and also to be able to stay with it. <laughs> so stay with this life force in my body. And as I track that now, it's you know, that life force is, is, it is energetic, but it suffuses my physical body. So I can feel the connection into my cells at the moment, particularly in my legs. Like I'm on the inside of my soft tissue and feeling the blood and the nerves and a sense of just the busyness of trillions of cells in my body, busy doing what cells do without any effort from me. I mean, there is no one who efforts the aliveness So in a sense, what I find is um, what happens is there's no effort in this experience of aliveness, but there can be resistance to it. And that really is where identity and conditioning takes hold. And I, and I would even say now takes hold of our bodies. So what I've been tracking in the last um, few years is the way that when I have certain aspects of my identity, I tend to use identity rather than ego because ego I find is really loaded in the culture now. So I say identity and what I mean is identity is always younger, even if it was an identity that formed from some way of being or belief yesterday, it's still younger than it is right now. So identity is something that is formed, that is constructed, and uh, is responsive, in a sense, to our environment. So when I feel identity aspects uh, activated in my body-mind, those identities really do come in and occupy my body, if I, if I put it that way. So, for example, if I have a younger aspect, which is active, 
and my body might feel a great sense of freedom, playfulness, um, silliness, creativity. And if I have an aspect which comes in and carries a lot of fear, then my body will also take that posture of fear. So I'll feel it in my back often, in my shoulders, in my muscles. I'll feel it uh, locks in my diaphragm, in my jaw, maybe in my forehead, in my throat. And so one of the things on my journey in the last, well, probably 15 years, but even more so in the last two years is just learning to track all of this without changing anything just to notice what's here right now and to begin to see in what ways these identity patterns impact me. And then there are some processes around that where those identity structures can be dissolved or sometimes burned off. So for me, in the last four or five years, there's been a massive energetic shift in my body, uh, which, again, I'm reluctant to name as as what it might be, because that just brings me into the story of something. But I just track it when the energy comes, I track it. And so what I've had are these series of identity uh, deaths I guess really that's what it is when I see it for what it is as something that has been born created usually out of some sort of separation that happened as a child my needs weren't being met in one way or other you know and there's a kind of fragmentation that happens And you might recognize this in yourself. The separations, the way we separate ourselves out. This is me when I'm like this. This is me when I'm like that. This is how I am when I'm there. This is how I am when I'm with in another context. And so we have different parts of our identity that can and act against ourselves really and create in a conflict ultimately and maybe suffering <laughs> with that and what i found over the years as as these identity structures begin to dissolve then there's less resistance to the life force and something a few years ago that seemed to be really common in kind of social media threads was this idea of our authentic self And I really resisted that word authentic because to me, it seemed like I was just going to be choosing one of those identity structures to say, that's the real me. And then, of course, in a beautiful (laughs) irony, the movement practice that I went on to um, really deepen into was authentic movement um, with Joan and that was established by Janet Adler in the States. And it's a process where with eyes closed, we begin to move and we track the movement and we allow our bodies to move from impulse. So we might say in an authentic way. So there's no part of my thinking, my mental thinking, that is saying, do this, do that, make it look like this, make it look like that. I'm just moving. And often the experiences of of being moved, in fact. So I know this place of authenticity in my movement and uh, also working with Jules Heavens for many years, Jules introduced me to Naked Voice. And it's really the same process with that where we open our mouths and we allow whatever sound is here to emerge. And we follow the impulse again, the impulse for sound making. 
And somewhere within both of those processes of body and voice, there's a space afterwards of reflection or integration where I, I see or I know more of myself. So when I return to the Dylan Thomas poem now, actually I'm, I'm tracking it through and I'm like, yeah, there is this force that drives us forward. And he seems to be really concerned about time with this. And time itself is a construct. But in the concerns of humans, I guess, the idea that we only have so much time or that time is going to run out and are we going to achieve what we need to achieve? Well, there's only now, really. So time could drive us. It could be our master. Or we could be in this moment now. And now, and now. The other theme in the poem that I've just realized as I've read it this morning is actually, I wonder if he's talking about sex. So he's talking about the force that through the green fuse dries the flower, dries my green age, that blasts the root of trees is my destroyer. I am dumb to tell the crooked rose my youth is bent by the same wintry fever. So the crooked and the rose, I mean, the rose is synonymous really with the feminine. And his youth is bent. <laughs> okay, so we could take that. Um, and then he's got the force that dries the water through the rocks, dries my red blood, the mouthing streams dumb to mouth and to my veins a mountain spring the mouth sucks these are all words that i could definitely associate with sexual experience and so there's something here if, if i go to the last but he says i'm dumb to tell the lover's tomb how at my sheet goes the same crooked worm and uh, again the the, the lover's tomb, I, I, I would uh, relate to um, a woman, the female's womb. We talk about the womb and the tomb. So um, it's the crooked worm and the lover's tomb. So there's something here for me that I'm reading today, which is really linked to Eros and the erotic. So that driving force that is in all of nature and um, is bursting forth, that is always connecting, connecting, connecting. And even when it's unseen, so right now I'm recording this and it's the end of October and nature is dying back, but the force isn't dying back. It's just coming within. So all of the, you know, plants, they're, they're not dying in the winter, they're dying back. So that energy is being taken in and down into the root systems. In the same way that um, I talked about containment at the beginning, sometimes that life force is bursting through me and it's out in the world and it's blossoming and it's blooming and it's bright and um and sometimes, actually, that life force comes deep within, deep within, deep within. And if I track my own menstrual cycle, both of those are there with the ovulation and menstruation, you know, that, that one energy with the hormones uh, that drive it um, bring us up and out and really looking for that connection. And the other that brings us down and in and allows us to to travel deeper, really into that energy internally. So however this resonates for you, I, I hope you'll be able to find something in here that, um, that, that, that maybe brings you closer to your own experience of what force a life force is for you and I hope as you listen through the series you'll 
you'll also find that that in each conversation um, and they're all very different that maybe you'll know more about what that is for you and specifically I would say as a coach now it's like what are your resistances to it in what ways do you stop your own life force coming through because it's here and if you don't feel it if you don't sense it if you don't see it in how you are in the world then perhaps this is a moment for you to reflect on um, why you stop it and what why are you what are you afraid of of losing in a sense by not expressing it can you feel 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 it